Okay, here's my finals match at 2023 Nogi Pans. And uh, I cut out the beginning of the match. We were just doing some strong hand fighting. Nothing of consequence occurred. So there's a little less than four minutes left here. And we're going to check out the match. I'm going to tell you what happened here. So my opponent here is pummeling in. He's going to attempt a shot here. And I'm going to defend the takedown. And right there, I have... I'll go back here. So when he shoots in, I end up getting an underhook and uh, and head control. So right here, I have this underhook and I have head control. So this is essentially a cow catcher. So with these grips, I, I have an opportunity here to drive my hips over and turn him and put him flat on his back. So my immediate response here is to try to cow catcher him and put him down. But my opponent's very skilled. He does a good job of avoiding the cow catcher. So then I just go to a front headlock, and now I try to come behind him. So my idea is let's just get behind and maybe get a look at his back. In the rules of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, since my opponent initiated the takedown, I'm not eligible to score points for the takedown. So instead of score, unless I get back control, I can't get the takedown but perhaps I can score another way. So I'm coming around him here, trying to get to his back. He's falling to his hip. He's doing a good job of moving his back away from me and trying to retain his guard. So he does that. He's starting to get his back on the ground here. He's doing a good good job. So what, I, what my goal now is with my left arm here is I'm trying to get an underhook on the other side, get an underhook on his right arm. If I can do that, then maybe I can effectively pin both shoulders down and maybe I can get to a decent chest-on-chest -chest half guard and start to pass. So I have the underhook. I'm starting to pin him here. And there we go. Now I'm basically chest-to-chest -chest half guard. <laughs> He's putting in sort of a lockdown here, which is probably a good strategy because if he gets his lockdown going, he can impede my forward progress and maybe he can work for a sweep. Uh, so here we go. So now I put my head down. So I have an underhook on the left side here with my left arm and my head is to the other side of his head. So this is a head block position. And the, one of the benefits of this is now I don't need to connect my hands. So I have my right arm to help me pass. And what you can see what I'm doing here is I'm pushing his knee down to help me free my leg. I'm pushing that down and I'm starting to get out of the lockdown actually here. So now what I do is I, I think, hey, let me put my foot in there. My hand wasn't working. I wasn't, I wasn't able to get my knee through enough. So I start to insert my foot here, but I can use this hand to help my balance. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stable. Trying to get my toes in there. Good. So I broke the lockdown. And now I got my knee through here. So my knee is through. I have a good underhook. I have my head block position. My hands on the mat. I'm pretty stable. So I'm in a pretty good position. My opponent's reaching under my leg here. Maybe he's trying to initiate a sweep. We'll see what happens. I'm trying to push that top leg. See? I'm using my foot here. To, if I can push this top leg off, I might be able to get my foot free. And he's grabbing my foot here with his hand, trying to control me here a little bit. Very difficult to pass my opponent. He's doing a good job of keeping control. And then right there, I get free of his legs. But if you can see it, his left hand is holding my shin here. So he's giving himself an opportunity to recover because I'm technically past his legs here, but I have to maintain a pin here for three seconds to score the pass. It's not good enough just to get past their legs. You have to control them for three seconds. We'll see what happens. And I'm almost there and boom, he recovers. So my opponent does a very good job bumping me forward, off balancing me and recapturing my foot. So I did not score passing points, but as you can see, the referee here gave me an advantage point for almost passing. I got 
pass the guard for for a second maybe and i don't score the points but i, I have an advantage so now it's zero zero and i'm up by a single advantage let's see what happens now so now he's on his side so this is less than ideal for me because I, i'm not pinning his shoulders and he has a strong scissor on my foot it's a little tricky for me to get my foot out here so i think what's happening is i'm trying to attack his arm with my right arm here i'm trying to maybe get double unders but it's very hard to, I'm, i almost have my heel out i'm almost out there i am almost out he recaptures my foot but i'm pinning him a little bit better now i connect my hands so look at what i'm doing now so let me go back there so that was interesting so my hands are connected I'm pinning him. So instead of continuing to try to pass the side control, where he's already demonstrated a very good job of recollecting my foot and denying me the pass, instead, I'm going to bring my knee to the other side here, to this hip. So there I go. So what, what this is starting to do now is not only is it pinning his shoulders, it's starting to pin his hips. So this is going to make it a little bit more difficult for him to, to control my feet and legs. So I start to pin him, boom, and I almost get to mount. See, I'm essentially in mount, but once again, you have to hold this position for three seconds. And he has his left arm and his hand is down here collecting the bottom of my shin, and he's doing a good job of unpinning his hips. And he's going to try to collect my right foot here. And... Let's see if he can do it. He's digging under with his toes, lifting my foot up, and he gets my foot. So I do not score passing points, and I don't score mount points. But I get an advantage for almost passing, another advantage for almost mounting. So now the score is 0-0, zero, zero, and I have three advantages. So it seems like I'm in a great position, right? But the problem is... If he can keep my foot, and if he can manage to sweep me, he'll score two points, and he'll be winning the match at that. with that. So even though I'm in a, a very strong position here, I have to proceed intelligently. I, I can't allow myself to be swept. So I'm, I'm in a pretty strong position. I go back, try to put my, my shoelace in to pry my foot out. And I think I end up getting double underhooks. So now double underhooks, I have a strong, I'm going to have a strong pin. It's going to be harder for him to use his hand. So I'm on my head's on this side and I'm pinning his shoulders strongly here. Now I switch my head to the other side to see if that's going to make my pin any stronger. Now, now is I get double underhooks. So see his hand, his hand's having trouble reaching my foot. So now I get my shoelace in. I'm going to try this again. I got to pin his shoulders down. I get the double underhook. So that's a very strong pin. Look, I can pin his shoulders strongly. I pry my feet out. Boom. And now I get that clean mount and pass. And this 24 seconds left. And I got my pass points and I got my mount points. So now it's seven to nothing with three advantages. And my son is coaching me. You can't hear him, but I got 16 seconds left. And he's not satisfied with me winning seven to nothing. He wants me to work toward a finish. That's what jujitsu is about control that leads to a submission. So he's cheering me on, ordering me get you, you got to work toward a submission. So I don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to try to somehow get maybe to a triangle choke here. So I'm going to stuff his hand down and just try to get to some kind of triangle threatening position. But he does a good job of bumping me over. And now this two seconds left, one second, the match is over. And that's it.